All right, welcome back. We're at BookCon 2015. I'm Rich Folley. We have another half an hour to go before the end of our live stream, and this is BookView Now. David Levithan kindly came to join us as guest host this hour. Wrap it all up, yes. <laughs> Wrap it up to bring us home. But before that, we have the fabulous Luba Bray with us on the couch. Come on. Hi, Rich. Very nice. Nice to see you again. Nice to see you, too. You are the author of Lair of Dreams. Look at the cover. This, this is beautiful. Ooh. Beautiful cover. Uh, a diviner's novel, a world we got to know quite well in the diviners, the original release. Now you're coming back with book two. How exciting. <laughs> and yes, how exciting. It is exciting. I, it's, I, it's fabulous. I lived through it. It's, yes. it's, it's done. <laughs> now you get to talk about it. Is that the fun part? Or is like, you know, do, would you, is that more painful than actually doing I, the writing? I thought putting my hand in a, in a bowl of Chex Mix was actually the fun part. <laughs> yeah. it's like, I'm, I'm done. You guys take it from here. I'm, hmm, snacks. Well, we should still, well, tell us about it. Tell us now that you're out in the world and you're starting to talk about this and, uh, and it's coming out in August. It is. August 25th. Yeah. August 25th? August 25th. I hardly know her. Huh. <laughs> it's the day after the 24th. No way. It's the word on the street. What's it about? Is it more Lair or August more Dreams? August 25th? <laughs> it's about, oh, it's about a day after <laughs> August 24th. It's a fine day in the summer. Come on, come on. There's a lot of pages there. Surely, surely there's something inside <laughs> yes, of it. Yes, it, it doubles as it, it doubles as an in table it's right. or an it's upper massive. body workout. It's beautiful. Oh wow, you can you can do it with marbles. Like yeah, there we go. Just like wow. can, it's it's too uh, Brian's Can saying, you hold them? Oh my god, she can hold them both at once. That is that's amazing. Weight, that's your oh, Brian that. Selznick, you have defeated me. Oh. You have to learn how to draw. This one is a hunk and that is beautiful book. It's beautiful. So what is your book about? Oh, what is, stop stop dancing around. I'm sorry. Uh, what the American is, public wants to know. It's about 691 pages currently. It's uh, it is the sequel to The Diviners. It is set in 1920s New York City. And it involves the supernatural. My my editor Alvina Ling, the amazing Alvina Ling. Always the amazing Alvina. She Ling. is. Yeah. She is great. She's just as amazing. She's just as, she as was amazing. The yeah. yeah, she's. She might actually be a little more amazing <laughs> because she she, she managed to make that happen. Yeah. Um, she uh, she calls it the Great Gatsby meets Stephen King, and I I am grateful with to flappers. her <laughs> with flappers, X Files yeah. with flappers, yes, right. and it concerns a group of. Um, a large cast of characters, all of whom have some sort of supernatural ability, and there seems to be this uh, this evil that is awakening. Mm -hmm. um, and in, in in the first diviners, um, <laughs> wow, wouldn't it be great if I were able to actually tell you about my own book? I'm I going to do this I, in I, mind. I think I can actually tell you more about it than you can. I think. I'm gonna, I'm Please, gonna jump Rich. in. Wow. Well, I will say that like the 1920s is so well represented in this book, though. And like I, you spent another six or seven hundred pages writing about the 1920s and the diviners. I just wanted to know if this 700 pages is as fun once you're diving into an era like that, when you're so submerged in the world and the research and the librarians that you turn to for all of your research. Was it as fun, just, you know, going deep into the same era? Are you looking like, can I get to the 30s by any chance? <laughs> <laughs> it is. I mean, and I think because the 1920s is such a fascinating period, because it's, it, it, it feels like something that came out of central casting. It's a decade that feels like it came out of central casting. It is, I mean, you've got the Ziegfeld Follies, you've got Prohibition, you've got organized crime, you've got flappers, but you've also got a lot of social change. And I think that that is one of the things that really drew me to writing about this period was um, that I was kind of trying to, I, I, I kind of wanted to write about post 9-11 America and then looking at the 1920s of course I saw all of these parallels mm -hmm. um, and whenever you have a great amount of social change you get a lot of fear and so it was very interesting and at times um, you know heartbreaking to see that as I was writing on this and um, you know, and I'm writing about racism and xenophobia and and um, class struggle, and to see that yes, we are still here. Yeah, we are still. We here. haven't made the progress that we should have probably made by now. Yeah, so those are all topics that um, you know can consume you for this. It's also something that um, as you're looking at your button that you're wearing right now, we need diverse books. It's still, to your point, a topic that we're still addressing. We, were, we had Jacqueline Woodson on the set earlier, and David and I were talking about how we made some progress with that a while ago, and then it seemed to have stopped, and now we've made a lot more progress. What's your involvement with this group? Um, well, I'm basically, I, I mean, I'm just, I'm in awe of the work that We Need Diverse Books has done, and I, I think that um, 
just, I think th we were talking this morning about um, about continuing the conversation and the fact that how wonderful it was to see that that you know uh, I know Jackie was talk talking about uh, how social media had really kind of helped to make you know this, this grassroots change and to see that the conversation is still going and that it's strong and it's getting stronger um, and I'm just happy to be part of the conversation yeah and you see this conference which has never existed you know a few years ago there wasn't a conference of readers coming together in one place then you know we saw comic-con sort of explode and book expo was always sort of a private event there were some great book festivals miami los angeles and some great others but this has been fun to see a con that has the word book in front of it and people actually getting super thrilled by it. i think that sort of reader world is sort of driving a lot of this too they seem so open to all of this right now yeah, I mean, I think when you can see that there are swarms of teenagers at the Javits right. Center yeah. on a Sunday. <laughs> they had to walk a long way to get here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's a pretty incredible thing. And to have, um, you know, to, to see readers coming up and also talking about how these books have, have affected them and about how they themselves are telling their own stories, mm -hmm. um, that's incredible. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's uh, this generation is... I think pretty pretty fascinating, pretty savvy, um, and thoughtful. I mean, I think that they are they are changing the world. Yeah. So. I see that with my own kids. My own kids seem so much more together than I was at their age. I mean, all of them are um, smart. They're they're more self they're more self aware. They're more aware of other people. They seem more empathetic than I was at that time. Um, I'm not sure what happened to my generation, but this new one seems like they're in pretty right? good shape. Right? I was now. like checking my hair for split ends and listening to Led Zeppelin. I mean, you know, I, I, I was could not have same. been trusted with anything. It's terrible, and I think we're probably close. I don't know if we're all the same age or not, but I think we're probably pretty close. 29? Yeah, yeah. right around there. <laughs> right around there. David uh, qualified himself as old school before, right. so you guys have both been in publishing and books for a long time. We've been it's through the wars around. together, haven't we, darling? Oh, David. Well, you've seen oh, there's it up close. Halcyon days. You both have seen it up close, though, the change. I mean, has it been something that you think has just jumped really dramatically recently, or has this been sort of a gradual shift in the way people are approaching reading? Well, I mean, I think, I think there's pre-Harry Potter and post-Harry Potter. I mean, I think I, Harry Potter was the thing that engaged so many people so quickly and so intensely and made reading an event. Um, and I think certainly there have been important books before that. There will be important books after that. But for our times, I think a lot of the teenagers and certainly the 20-somethings that we are seeing here at BookCon, they were first energized as 9-year-olds or 10-year-olds waiting for Harry Potter 4 to come out. Yeah. And I think that, that that was a shift. And obviously, social media and book culture changed very rapidly at the same time. And that has really altered the landscape of our lives as authors considerably, that we get so much feedback um, all the time most of it positive it really it's it's really exciting i mean and i think although i want to talk about talking about sort of the younger generation made me think about sort of the conversations you you had with with josh and his friends about feminism and ya and just sort of talking to them and i was really blown away by how clear-headed they are um in looking at sort of the way that books are presented to them and that i know is something you've spoken about a lot yeah, I mean, I, I ended up having a conversation uh, last year with some teens. Um, I was actually writing about gender in books uh, because there had been this sort of unfortunate trend in publishing of saying, well, that's a boy book or that's a girl book. Mm -hmm. It's like, no, they are books. Right, right. They, they do not have gender in and of themselves. But this, of course, is a marketing right. uh, thing. And to say, you know, well, this is a boy book or this is a girl book. And overwhelmingly, when we say this is a boy book, what we're saying is this is a book that is important. And when we say this is a girl book, usually what happens is that is a way of dismissing the book. And, you know, and, and to say to, to a boy, you know, oh, well, you don't have to read that if you want. It's, it's a girl book. Is, in effect saying you don't have to be concerned with 51% of the population, right. which is a very bad message to send for, for boys as, and, and for girls. Um, but I ended up having this conversation with all these teens about how books were marketed to them and had books ever been marketed to them along gender lines. And they were completely aware 
of the way that that happened and they would talk about how oh yes if a, if a book has a blue and gray cover they're trying to market it to a boy and they could just tell from you know from a distance um, but it was also I think very eye-opening to discover that some of these teens had come to to some of the conferences and they would go up to the publishing booths and they told a story of going up these uh, these two girls had gone up and asked about a book and it was one of those blue gray covers right. and the person in the booth said you know I don't think that you really it's want that you. book I think that's for your friend yeah. who was male and um, you know color cues tell the story but it was just also the 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 idea that publishing it's like no your readership is already so far ahead of you right. in terms of being, you know, involved. Right. You need to get with the program. Yeah. Somebody's got to be keeping up, you know, or at least yeah. uh, staying a step ahead of the game is ideal, but at least keeping up. Yeah. You know? yeah, that's really challenging uh, because I think that you're, you're dealing with big business um, and business is just trying to figure out how to make the most money sometimes. Even the best intentioned publishers are, are recognized that like there's like a formula that's really hard to step out of. But when you have authors pushing it, and you have your readership sort of making the moves, they will get there eventually. Yeah. They really will. And you're starting to see it, certainly. And that's been exciting, I think, for all readers, not just you know young adult readers, but everybody. Because I think we've also seen some of those techniques applied to adult books, too. Um, you can sort of identify categories and things like that in the adult world, too. But and I also think that what is happening, as you were saying about you know that they'll catch up, gets back to our conversation about the conversations, right. and that is, that the pressure keeps up and, yeah. and that we work in concert. It's not just, you know, like, well, here are three people trying to make change. It's like, no, actually, there's this whole movement yeah. happening and we all are kind of trying to Embrace make it. this happen. Make it happen. Well, we don't have a whole lot more time. I'm seeing our clock tick down. I'm really curious, Libba, what's happened? Where, I mean, what, where are you going to go I mean, with this? Because you have been around for a while. Diviners is like this thing. You could stay in this forever. <laughs> I, I don't want to leave the Not 20s. if I want to stay married. <laughs> <laughs> but there's a great, this is a great era though. There's so much to mine. Uh, there is so much to mine. And, uh, and it's and a you're diviner's every novel. single minute of it. I tell you. <laughs> <laughs> it's a diviner's novel, meaning there's multiple. So, like, there, what do you think? There, no, there are four altogether. And then if I, if I even, if I even, you know, pretend that I can count to five, you know. Yeah. Three shall be the number thou shalt count. Um, then I will be. Uh, uh, there. Speaking of community, yeah. there will be a whole bunch of people staging an intervention. Like, this no, yeah. no, you're not allowed to write anymore. Well, you know what's fun is that we're still in between. We're in the in between phase. Which is something I miss with Harry Potter actually, where you had to wait for the next one to come. You couldn't binge watch like you know, right. like, like 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 Netflix books. <laughs> I mean, like my kids I am just not blow Netflix. through them. Yeah. You're just gonna have to wait. You have to just wait. Mama needs a break. You have to wait. It makes it even more meaningful when it comes out. So, well, Libba, thank you so much for thank being here. Thank you so much, yeah, Rich. Wonderful.